Panginoon, bago kong maging ganap na pari, nais ko munang humingi ng kapatawaran, lalong-lalo na kay Samantha. Mahal ko siya pero hindi ko mahindian at baliwalain ang pagtawag mo. Kung talagang pinatawag ka niya, magpaparaya ako. Baunin mo to. Kahit paminsan-minsan, naisip mo ko, magkasal mo na rin ako. I love you. Goodbye. Sinundan ko ang iyong tawag at napagdesisyonan kong pumasok ng seminaryo. Hindi ko man lubos maintindihan nung una, ginabayan naman ako ng Espiritu Santo. At sa aking pagpasok, tinagap niyo ko bilang isang tunay na anak Panginoon. Sa loob ng seminaryo, hindi lamang sa pag-aaral ako natuto. Natutunan ko din makasalamuha at makipagkaibigan. Kasama sila sa mga masasayang alaala ko bilang isang seminarista. Sa aking pagtutong si Kalima at ikaanim na taon sa seminaryo, Patuloy pa rin ang mainit na pagtanggap niyo sa akin sa Divine World Seminary. Lalong lumalim ang pagkilala ko sa inyo, Panginoon. Naging mas malapit ako sa mga bagay na inyong nilikha dito sa digdig kung saan ikaw ang naghahari. Kaya bago ko maging isang galap na tagapaglingkod ng Panginoon, tanggapin mo nawa itong taos pusong pasalamat ko sa iyo. Ito ang aking samot na langin. Amen. Ngayong isa na akong ganap na pari, hayaan mo ipagpatuloy ko kasama ng aking mga estudyante ang kalooban mong lumikha sa tulong ng iyong lakas at biyaya ng isang daigdig kung saan nagahari ka sa bawat puso. Isang daigdig na may kapayapaan at katarungan at pagkalinga sa kalikasan. May magpapatuloy pa kaya sa aking ginagawa, Panginoon?
Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Please kneel for the prayer to Jesus, the divine word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, divine word made flesh. From the beginning you already were. Before even time begun, you are Son, and with the Father and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. But in the fullness of time, you who created man became man yourself. Through God, the Holy Spirit, and Mary, you became Jesus, divine word made flesh. You came to our world to save us and show us how to live and love here, so we may live and love hereafter. Dear Jesus, divine word incarnate, please teach us to follow you. May our love for you always be made flesh, not ever lost in word or song alone. In prayer, we come face to face with you, like you with the Father and Holy Spirit. In love and service, may we likewise come face to face with our sisters and brothers, the least of them most of all. For as we treat each other, so do we treat you. In your name we pray now, always and in all ways. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. We pray for the following intentions of this Mass as shown on the screen.
A blessed day to all of you, brothers and sisters, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is Monday of the 17th week in Ordinary Time. Our Mass Presider is Rev. Father Ronnie Chrysostomo, SVD, Rector of the Shrine. Our Eucharistic celebration and devotion to the Holy Spirit will now begin. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The Church celebrates today the memorial of uh, Saints Joachim and Anne, parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary, maternal grandparents of Jesus. We pray as we did yesterday for the, uh, our grandparents, grandparents and uh, elderly people, that the Lord may bless them and may continue to uh, perform their mission, important mission in life, even in their old age. To uh, celebrate worthily this Eucharist, we ask God's mercy and pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, God of our fathers, who bestowed on saints Joachim and Anne this grace, that of them should be born the mother of your incarnate Son, Grant through the prayers of both that we may attain the salvation you have promised to your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses turned and came down the mountain with the two tablets of the commandments in his hands, tablets that were written on both sides, front and back, tablets that were made by God, having inscriptions on them that were engraved by God himself. 
Now when Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, That sounds like a battle in the camp. But Moses answered, It does not sound like cries of victory, nor does it sound like cries of defeat. The sounds that I hear are cries of revelry. As he drew near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. With that, Moses' wrath flared up, so that it threw the tablets down and broke them on the base of the mountain. Taking the calf they had made, he fused it in the fire and then ground it down to powder, which he scattered on the water and made the children of Israel drink. Moses asked Aaron, What did this people ever do to you that you should lead them into so grave a sin? Aaron replied, Let not my Lord be angry. You know well enough how prone the people are to evil. They said to me, Make us a God to be our leader. As for the man Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. So I told them, Let anyone who has gold jewelry take it off. They gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and this calf came out. On the next day, Moses said to the people, You have committed a grave sin. I will go up to the Lord then. Perhaps I may be able to make atonement for your sins. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Ah, this people has indeed committed a grave sin in making a god of gold for themselves. If you would only forgive their sin, if you will not, then strike me out of the book that you have written. The Lord answered, him only who has sinned against me will I strike out of my book. Now go and lead the people to the place I have told you. My angel will go before you. When it is time for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Then He spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, His chosen one, withstood Him in the breach to turn back His destructive wrath. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. We rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds 
The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and birds of the air, birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed evening to everyone and also to our uh, fellow worshipers in other parts of the world joining us in this uh, live stream mass from the shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word. As I've said, today we celebrate the uh, memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary and uh, the maternal grandparents of Jesus, we do not find their names mentioned in the uh, gospel accounts. Rather, these are uh, named in the so-called uh, apocryphal uh, gospel of James. It is a writing in the uh, second century attributed to uh, prophet uh, to the uh, apostle uh, James and it was not included in the so-called canonical gospels although they are not included in the uh, canonical gospels in the uh, eastern churches in their liturgy we find them their memory celebrated in that tradition of the Eastern churches. And from there, I think the Roman church got its inspiration to include later on in the uh, celebrations of the Church of Rome. In fact, uh, in the Eastern churches, they have the tradition of uh, greeting or congratulating the parents for the birth of their child. For example, Mary is greeted on the 1st of uh, uh, January, eight days after the birth of Christ. That is one way of looking at this celebration. Or uh, the uh, Mary... Uh, or uh, the parents of Mary whose birth is celebrated on the 8th of uh, September are greeted before in this uh, uh, on this day 25th or 26th of uh, July but at the bottom line of this feast this memorial is the conviction that God uses instruments, persons, and many times these are poor means, poor persons, simple persons, to realize His work, His plan of salvation. And recognizing this popular wisdom devotion of people that the church plays them as part of their the worship, the cult of the church 
no? these parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary called Joachim and Anne. Yesterday, we celebrated the first ever uh, World Day of Grandparents and Elderly People, established by no other than our Pope Francis, to be celebrated every year, every fourth Sunday of July. And uh, the placing of this celebration on this fourth Sunday of July is precisely motivated by the, its closeness with the feast of what we are celebrating today, the memorial of uh, Saints Joachim and Anne. And uh, the establishment of this celebration is seen as very significant, not only for the Catholic Church, Catholic faithful, but within the global community. One way of uh, one author in his appreciation of this feast established by Pope uh, Francis said that with the celebration of the World Day of Grandparents and Elderly, he said this he sees as a leaven, no? just like the the gospel today, you know, that with this initiative of celebrating the role of the grandparents, you know, making people a fitting appreciation of the role of grandparents across the globe, even that would hopefully extend also even to non-Christian or non-Catholics. And the, the beautiful message of uh, Pope Francis as he established this uh, feast or this uh, day of the grandparents and elderly people, he underscores the mission of the grandparents. Among the, the beautiful uh, description of uh, Pope Francis, he said that the grandparents are to be guardians of the connection between the younger, the family history and the salvation history that and to pass on this memory, this history to younger generations. And he sees this as a very important contribution of the grandparents, the older people to younger generations. No the history no, of how God intervened into their life and their own history as a family would mold and form the character of younger generations. And uh, the Pope asked the grandparents and seniors, what is your vocation today? at our age and he said and he proposes this it is to preserve our roots to pass on the faith to the young people and to care for the little ones he laments no, like other observers how young people have no roots anymore and lost in the ups and downs of the modern world without any roots anymore. And that is one of the beautiful and important role and mission of grandparents. Help them, help young generations to have roots No. He called the grandparents and uh, seniors as living memories, keeping the memory alive and sharing it with others is the true mission of the early elderly person. And he adds that memory is the foundation of life 
and grandparents have a key role in establishing in their grandchildren their firm familial roots and stories but also the history of faith. The young people look, he said, normally toward the present and the future and prone to neglect the past. Grandparents are prophets who bring the wisdom and experience of the past to guide the now and the not yet of younger generations. And uh, the Pope says, the future of the world depends on this covenant between grandparents and seniors and the young people. Dear friends, as we uh, remember Saints Joachim and Anne, we are reminded of this especially of the important role of the elderly and the grandparents especially to younger generations that they become the memory to help them appreciate their roots now, I'm sure in your own experiences of faith like my own experience who introduced me into the world of spiritual life of prayer where the grandparents they did not teach me much of who is God etc but in the practice of praying no. even with that is an important contribution that you have dear grandparents to your children and uh, thanks be to God that at least in our culture in our family structure still grandparents play an important role in our society in our families no? that we do not send them easily to homes for the aged but we try to take care of them as much as we can in our families and uh, this is a beautiful that we should uh, tradition and part of our culture and also to give importance to them as underscored by our Pope now the importance and the contribution, the mission of the elderly and the grandparents in our society. I think this uh, celebration of the day of grandparents and seniors is a beautiful way of emphasizing the dignity of the human person, especially in the context of the throwaway uh, culture when things or persons are not useful anymore when at times the elderly become burden for the family of the younger generation that many times they are sidelined and many times the elderly are tempted to resort to euthanasia as in uh, at, as it is happening in other parts of the world i think this feast this day uh, instituted by our pope complements very well this the dignity of the unborn of the young people that we celebrate no? Also, the celebration of the World Youth Day. If we have all these celebrations, I think it is a very important action of the Pope to institute this 
World Day of uh, our uh, grandparents and elderly. So the celebration of the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne reminds us of the dignity and value of every human person, even the so-called weak and frail old people. They are still, they still have the, a mission to fulfill and we are all called to promote the dignity, the human dignity, just as we learn and benefit from the wealth of their wisdom and experiences. May we continue to care, value our elderly in our families and our communities. And I think a concrete suggestion would be to listen to their stories. Sometimes we do not, uh, we just take them for granted, well, that they are there. O minsan pa ulit ulit na. But maybe we, we should devote our time, especially on Sundays, to listen to their stories. Ask them about what? Their experiences in, uh, of life, their learnings. How about also their, how they, their lab life and how they were able to live and go through the difficulties, for example, of relationships. Dear friends, the Lord invites us to value each one, especially those who are in need of our care, the weak, the old. And may we learn and be enriched by their experiences and wisdom. Amen. We are uh, children of God, but in humble prayer we come to Him as servants of the kingdom, seeking to do our duty and asking Him to increase our faith. In prayer, let us ask Him, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians and those who profess belief in Christ may grow in faith and love for one another as a sign of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our personal faith may increase and that we may acknowledge our complete dependence on God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose faith has grown cold and who are overcome by despair and anxiety may be blessed with new enthusiasm to renew their Christian commitment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That amidst their poor health, the sick and those who suffer may persevere in their faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead who have served the Lord in God's kingdom on earth may be welcomed into life eternal, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In special way, we pray for grandparents, elderly people, especially in those difficult situations. May they find adequate help to live worthy human life. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. God, our Father, realizing that by ourselves we can do nothing, help us to cling steadfastly to you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In 
Brothers and sisters, that these our sacrifices, our prayers, may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, these offerings of our homage, and grant that we may merit a share in the same blessing which you promised to Abraham and his descendants. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. fund of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Onesto our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those we pray in this Holy Mass. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Joachim and Anne, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace 
of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, we offer to one another Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Reminders, Holy Communion will be done by Rose. Ushers will guide you accordingly. Kindly sanitize your hands before receiving the body of Christ. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who will that your only begotten Son should be born from among humanity, so that by a wonderful mystery, humanity might be born again from you. We pray that in your kindness, you may sanctify by the spirit of adoption those you have fed with the bread you give your children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and our devotion to the Holy Spirit. We invoke the light, the help of the Spirit, especially for our world today facing this pandemic. Praises to the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, we have been taught by Jesus, the Son of the Eternal Father himself, to believe in your infinite majesty, 
and to reverently adore you as the third person of the Blessed Trinity, whose very being defies comprehension. Full of joy, we sing the praises of your love, which cooperated in the creation, redemption, and sanctification of the human race. With all the angels, we praise and bless you. O Holy Spirit, we praise you as the one true God with the Father and the Son. God, Holy Spirit, we praise you because you proceed from the Father and the Son from all eternity. Creator Spirit, we praise your power by which you created everything from absolute nothingness. Most lovable Holy Spirit, we praise your in in immense goodness in giving life to choirs of angels. Divine Artisan, we praise your admirable wisdom by which you created heaven and earth and adorned them so beautifully. Font of eternal grace, we praise your infinite mercy through which you prepared the redemption of the human race from the very beginning. Spirit of beauty, we praise your lavish generosity by which you chose and beautified the Virgin Mary to be your Immaculate Spouse. Divine Spirit of Anointing, we praise that love by which you created, guided, and glorified the human nature of Jesus. Eternal Fire of Love, we praise that gentle force with which you took hold of the Apostles when they were gathered together in Jerusalem. Holy Spirit, Sanctifier, we praise you because of the marvelous love by which you begin to live in our hearts through holy baptism. Divine Paraclete, we praise you for the sevenfold strength which you grant us through the sacrament of confirmation. Immeasurable goodness, we praise you because of the bread that you give us in the sacrament of the altar. Merciful Spirit, we praise your treasures of grace through which you cleanse and sanctify us in the sacrament of penance. Father of the poor and the sick, we praise you for the sacramental blessing and anointing through which you refresh the sick. O Royal Spirit, we praise that marvelous love through which you grant divine powers to your chosen ones in the sacrament of ordination. Holy Spirit, giver of life, we praise you for those gifts of grace by which you open a way of heavenly knowledge to those whom you call to the life of sacramental matrimony. O leader of all people, we praise you for that love through which all the just on earth follow you. O Holy Spirit, fullness of true holiness, we praise you for the eternal love by which all saints in heaven embrace you. O Holy Spirit, delight of the heavenly Jerusalem, we praise you for the everlasting love by which the holy seraphim and all the choirs of angels love you. O fund of all that is beautiful and love, we praise you for that undivided love which you shower on your Immaculate Bride without ceasing. Generous bestower of grace, we praise the immeasurable love with which the heart of Jesus has never ceased to love you. Spirit of the Father, we praise the infinite delight with which God the Father, who is without source, breathes forth from all eternity. Spirit of the Son, we praise that infinite delight with which the Word of God breathes you forth from all eternity. We praise and bless you forever, Holy Spirit, love of the Father and the Son, indestructible one, and infinite joy of the most blessed Trinity. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit of God, we open our hearts to receive you that we may learn how deeply and invisibly you are present everywhere. Give us stillness in your presence. Come us within through the gentleness of your peace. 
Strengthen our faith with awareness of your presence. Confirm the hope within us with the knowledge of your strength. Give us fullness of love through the outpouring of your gifts. Holy Spirit, be to us a source of light and strength and courage so that we may hear your call ever more clearly and follow it ever more generously. In the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, let us present to God our needs, prayers, and intentions. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal, eternal rest to those, those who have died. Give, give us the grace in these trying times to work, work for the, the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the, the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit God, God forever and ever. And ever. Amen. We, we fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, and deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsot, pray for us. Saints Arnold Jansen and Joseph Freinadamets, pray for us. Saints Joachim and Anne, pray for us. Yeah. 
them bread from heaven containing in itself all sweetness let us pray Lord our God may we always give due honor to the sacramental presence of the Lamb who was slain for us may our faith be rewarded by the vision of his glory who lives and reigns forever and ever amen Together we pray, blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. We have celebrated God's love and mercy. Go and share that love to others. Thanks be to God. In love, in love. 
full of grace. The Lord is with you, and blessed are you, blessed are you.